Hey everyone, my name is Matt. Welcome to my shop. I'm working on this countertop for my shop desk. And the thing I like about shop furniture is it's a really great time to experiment and try new things. So today I'm gonna to try for the first time a water-based finish. Now if you watched many of my videos, you'll know that I have been using this product here, General Finishes Armor Seal, pretty much on everything I, I, I build because I really like the result. Now why change? Well. On this project, this is maple, and the nice thing about a water-based finish is that it doesn't add any um, yellow, you know, yellow orange uh, hues to the wood. I want this to stay as white as possible, or as naturally colored as possible. I usually use this, and today I'm going to try this right here. General finish is high performance, so I'm going to give that a try. Now, as far as application method goes. That's going to vary a little bit too. Um, what I normally see people do with the water-based finishes is use a foam brush like this one here. And I'm used to using a rag to wipe on the armor seal. So that's going to be a little bit of a change as well. Now there's one other pretty big change and that is on surface prep. Now the, I guess the problem, if there really is a problem with the water-based finishes, is that it tends to raise the grain. That's not an issue with oil-based finishes. When you apply the water-based finish, it swells the fibers on the surface and causes them to kind of raise up and makes your once smooth surface rough. So before I got to this point where I'm ready to apply the finish, I first pre-raised the grain. So what that means is I sprayed the whole top down with a light mist of water, kind of wiped it around with a rag, and I left it to dry. And once it was dry, I sanded it down again with some fine grit sandpaper, just to knock down those fuzzies. So hopefully that will prevent the surface from raising um, anymore or at least at a minimum when I apply the water-based finish. So I think that's about it really. I'm just going to go ahead and do this for the first time. Never used this product before. So again, shop furniture is a great time to experiment. Now one thing I'm really looking forward to with this is the easier cleanup. I mean it's not like I had a whole lot of cleanup problems with the armor seal because I just used the rag and then threw it away. Although I'm seeing now my first problem is this brush is too big for this can. So I'm gonna get a smaller one. <laughs> I'll be back. All right, I'm back. Got a whole bunch of these things. So I just, I guess I use that to spread it out in the end here. So I'm just gonna start applying this. Maybe I'll start on this end. Now I'm already seeing this is not changing the color very much at all. And it's a lot less of a color change than when I use an oil-based finish. It is kind of putting a little bit of a yellow hue in if I had to give it any bit of color description, I guess. It is adding a little bit of yellow, but it's not as much orange and deep yellow as an oil-based finish. Now, I can already tell you that I'm not too fond of this uh, foam brush thing. Um, I probably should use a brush for this. But I didn't pick any of those up. This is kind of hard to evenly spread the finish, that's for sure. So, be a little bit careful with this, make sure I don't leave any big blobs anywhere. And it does feel like it's kind of going on a little dry. Maybe like the finish is too thick or this um, foam pad thing isn't really letting enough out onto the surface. But hey, this is why we experiment, right? So what I was saying before I realized I needed a bigger brush was the cleanup is going to be a little more convenient with this finish because it's water-based so you can clean it up with water. Um, and for me, it's not really a big of a deal because I didn't really have a whole lot of cleanup to do when I used Armor Seal because I just throw the rag I used away. So that's not, cleanup really wasn't an issue for me, so that's not a driving force to get me towards a water-based finish.
Uh, one thing you can't really see or smell, I guess, is that this is not, doesn't have a very strong odor to it. So it's nowhere near as, I don't know, pungent as an oil-based finish. So if you have sensitivity to that kind of thing, like to mineral spirits or any other solvent-based finishes like lacquer, this would be a good, uh, good product for that. Hopefully this stuff flows out better because I got, this stuff is pretty streaky with this foam brush thing. This stuff down here is already almost dry. So I think I'll do before it really starts to dry is I'll use my bigger pad thing, my bigger foam brush to sort of just uh, even things out down there. So I'll put a little bit of finish on there and I'll come back and just kind of smooth things out a little bit. Yeah, it looks a lot better. A lot less streaky now. There we go. This stuff is also a lot thicker than I'm used to. I'm used to really thin finish that flows out really quickly. This stuff is pretty thick. Now the other advantage of a water-based finish is the dry time. It dries faster than an oil-based finish. On the can it says this one should be dry in two hours or dry enough for another coat. And that's um, a little faster than the oil-based finish, which usually takes um, a four hours, three to four hours to dry enough for a new coat. So that's an advantage for sure if you're trying to get a finish on nice and quick. So that's on looking pretty good. I don't have any runs or anything, so I'm gonna let this dry and I'll go wash out this uh, foam pad thing. And then we'll see how this first coat turned out. I'm not sure how many coats I'm gonna put on this thing, so we shall see. I'll see you back in a little bit. Okay, so this has had plenty of time to dry now and I'm gonna come back and start sanding it smooth again. Now this is pretty rough actually, so I'm not sure like how much more rough it would be if I didn't pre-raise the grain, but this is a lot rougher of a finish on the first coat than an oil-based finish is typically for me. So I am going to use 320 grit sandpaper to hopefully knock this down uh, quite a bit here. So let's start sanding. That feels pretty good, and now to get rid of the dust, I'm just gonna wet this or damp this rag down with some, uh, some water real quick, and then just wipe down the, the wood here, just to pick up the dust. The one thing I'll say about the color is it has uh, whitened up quite a bit, or I guess it's cleared up quite a bit since it's dried. When I put it on last night, there was definitely a lot more of a yellow uh, hue to the wood and now it's a lot more white so I think it goes on a little bit yellow but then dries a lot more clear All right, so it's been about an hour and this is dry and ready for another coat again. That is definitely an advantage of a water-based finish is the dry time is so short. So this is 400 grit sandpaper now. And I'll do the same thing again. I'll sand it down and then wipe off the dust and then apply my new coat. All right, let that dry and I think, we'll see how it looks. The can says to do at least three coats, so at least this, but I probably will add another coat after this one. So let this dry and I'll see you soon.
So I went ahead and I applied another two coats to this so it makes it four coats total. And I think the, the amount of film buildup is, is pretty good. It uh, looks like and feels like it's a good amount. So I'm happy with the way that that turned out. Now as far as the finish itself turning out, um, I'm not super happy with the way it looks. Um, there's a lot of streaking in this. Now for shop furniture, that's not really a problem, but if I were to do this on an actual piece of furniture, this would not be acceptable. I can see, you know, I didn't use a brush, but I can really see like basically brush marks in here. And I think a lot of that had to do with the size of this piece that I was finishing. And the fact that the finish is thicker, it doesn't flow out very well. And the brush itself that I, use, that I was using, the um, foam brush, really didn't, um, just didn't do a good job of putting the finish down. So maybe a combination of fitting the finish, using a brush, using some kind of other application method would work well for this finish. Probably spraying would be even better. Now, if you recall back to the beginning of the video where I mentioned the reason why I was using this finish in the first place was for the color. So I thought it'd be really valuable to be able to show you the looks of different woods with an oil-based finish on them and the water-based finish on them. So let's take a look at a few samples. Okay, so first let's take a look at the maple. So this is the maple top with the water-based finish on it. Here is what a natural piece of maple would look like from the same piece. This is an offcut. So this is what no finish on maple would look like. This here is an oil-based finish on maple. So you can see that it has a little bit more of a yellow uh, hue to it. Next up, let's take a look at uh, red oak. I have a few samples here. This is red oak with nothing on it. This is a water-based finish and this is the oil-based finish. Now this sample here is ash. This is without any finish, water-based and oil-based. Here is white oak with no finish. This is a water-based finish and then this is the oil base. Next up is cherry. Here is cherry with nothing on it. This is the water-based finish, and this one is the oil-based finish. You can see, especially on cherry, it's really dramatic, the difference between the oil base and the water-based finish. It really brings out a lot more of the reds in the cherry. And then the water-based finish almost looks like there's nothing on it. it. Looks almost exactly like the uh, bare wood. And last one is walnut. Here is my plain wood sample, or bare wood. There's a water-based finish, and this is the oil-based finish. So again, walnut's another one of those woods where it's dramatically different when you have an oil-based finish on it as opposed to a water-based finish. So I hope you enjoyed this look at working with a water-based finish over an oil-based finish. Um, again, for me, my first time, I thought it was really, I don't know, thought it'd be a really cool idea to do this and show you how it came out for me for the very first time, since I know finishing is one of those topics where you can really, if you do it wrong, you could really screw up your project. So again, shop furniture, great time to practice. <laughs> and I hope you enjoyed seeing the different comparisons between the different woods with the finishes on them and how they look. And again, for me, on most of these woods, I think the oil-based finish looks a little better to, to my eye, especially on the walnut and cherry. The water-based finish just doesn't even do it any justice. So if you use a water-based finish a lot, let me know in the comments what you do. Um, that should help out some other people as well. Um, again, I've never done this before, and this is the first time I've ever done it, so I thought it'd be kind of nice to show the exact results that I got the first time I tried it based on what I've seen other people do. So thank you as always for watching. I greatly appreciate it. If you have any questions or comments about water-based finishes, I can try and answer them. <laughs> but if you have questions about what I did today, please feel free to leave those in the comments down below. I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. Until next time, happy woodworking.